Hey, I'm Yan. In this episode, we're going to share with you how to recreate that K-drama men's makeup look in the most simplistic manner. And if you like the video, please hit the subscribe and the bell button. Any comments, just leave it down below and let's get right into it. Hello everyone, as you can see, I'm actually alone today. Um, Fiona is not beside me, all thanks to the COVID situation. Uh, so today, um, it's going to be a really special Beauty and the Geek episode where I'm doing alone. Um, it's also due to the fact that there's a request from a friend who actually has been watching A.T. Wong Class um, Korean drama. And after watching for a while, he has been asking me like, how do you actually do like Korean drama freshness makeup for guys with the minimum amount of products, super noob, super beginners. And I thought that, why do you ask me? I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not a makeup expert. I'm equally noob as you. Uh, so he gave a very good logic is that since I'm noob and I have that interest, uh, probably I could come up with a really very easy way to recreate that KDF look, Korean drama freshness look. And then I thought, okay, that makes sense. So, I mean, I've kind of like dabbled with a little bit of foundation in the previous episode. So you have not watched it, the link is above. Uh, so I guess that, okay, since with that sort of little experience, uh, I could actually do my very own version of very basic men's makeup inspired by Korean drama. So uh, today, I'm going to split the makeup process into three key steps, uh, which I feel that is key to creating that freshness look that Korean drama always have. You know, that sort of like um, what we call as glass skin, very fresh, out of bed. You know, you have like ample amount of sleep sort of look and, you know, the skin is always bright, tight slightly dewy looking. Um, so there are three steps. First is the prep step, followed by your foundation. And the last part is going to be the touch-ups here and there to kind of like refine, to create that finesse to the look. So without further ado, we're going to start right into the KDF makeup look. Okay, as you can see, I have some products with me. Um, I'm going to run through one by one as I go along. Um, but I'm going to go through step by step what I normally would do when it comes to... Um, doing makeup. It sounds really weird. Sorry, I'm perspiring. <laughs> okay, um, it sounds really weird to say that um, what do I normally do when I do makeup? Can I just tell you that I really hardly do makeup? Um, the most frequent or the most um, makeup that I've done is really for the previous episode. So, um, before I start, I'm going to take off my very warm jacket, which I put on out of vanity so i'm just gonna remove it okay let's get down to the actual work okay so the very first step right that i will always do is really to prep the skin so i've just washed my face um nothing on my skin um if you can see i have literally nothing on so the very first thing that i always do uh, i will always do is to prep the skin and hydration is key uh, to give you a little bit of an analogy is that if your skin is not supple, it's not hydrated, probably you'll be uh, looking at a lot of challenges in terms of texture, um, getting the product to stay on your skin. So ideally, you should really have your skin prepared, you know, in that sense. So there are two items. Um, no, in fact, there are three items that I would use, three to four items, depending how obsessed are you with the prep stage. Um, first is really a essence. Um, is the new gen essence uh, i'm just going to talk as i do um, what i really love about this product if you have watched the other episode is that it really creates that sort of um, a brightness glow for my skin so uh, what is amazing is that i'm going to bring my mirror over <laughs> um, this product it really freshen up the skin quite instantaneously Okay, so if you don't have an essence, um, you don't have to worry. You can just go with any toner. Um, of course, I guess in terms of a result, it's going to be slightly different. It's still kind of like prep your skin for the subsequent step. But what I love about essence is that it is like a more intense version of your toner, um, it could even be sort of like replacing your serum, depending what sort of product you have. 
so I really love this new gen product. Um, you see, I'm really down to the final bits. Okay, so let it rest for a while. Probably with that, I'm not too sure whether you can see, but um, it really instantaneously sort of like introduced a bit of glow. So that is my prep step. Um, the first step to prep. Okay, um, the next thing I will do is actually tr throw in serums. Um, two serums that I will use, but if you want to cut down into one, I would suggest that the thing you should keep will be a hydration serum. Uh, what I will do is that I will do two serum, hydration serum or, eh, sorry, and the vitamin C serum. So for hydration serum, I'll go with hyaluronic acid 2% plus B5, which is from The Ordinary. Uh, cheap and good. You can't ask for more. Okay, once you apply this, right, you immediately feel that your skin is going to be really supple, okay. So during this COVID situation, I can just say that <laughs> I've not been touching any of the foundation that I bought for the previous episode. They have been lying there, not doing anything. So I guess this episode is going to help me to use up some of them. And it's weird because I'm doing this well for now. <laughs> okay, um, so normally for hyaluronic acid, um, there'll be a bit of stickiness to it, not to worry. Just to let it sit for a while. Um, I think what is important at this stage is that you have to let your skin really absorb all the hydration and benefits from your product. Okay. Okay, so if you feel that you know you just want to go with one serum, which is hydration, great. You can just stop there. Uh, for me, I'm a little bit more. Um, mm, I want a little bit more, so uh, I'm gonna add in one more vitamin C serum. Um, I'm using the uh, Melano CC. I, I really love this. What I love about this is that uh, the texture is a bit balmy. But at the same time, I feel that it hydrates the skin really well. And you could actually feel that um, the skin is brightened up quite instantaneously as well. So maybe for the whole face, I'll go with four drops. Okay. And one key thing is that you should never, never miss out your neck. I don't know, I guess... Especially for guys, sometimes we just focus a lot more on the face when we're applying skincare and totally ignore the neck. So just make sure um, the neck is taken care of as well. Okay. So at this stage, right, after the serum, normally I'll let the serum sit in for like a minute or so before we go into um, the moisturizer, okay? Um, and I will say for this, right, um, it really depends how is the texture like for your serum. Uh, for this particular vitamin serum, it's slightly a little bit um, oil, okay, balmy is the word. So it might take a little bit more time to let it sit and to really see that skin has fully absorbed it. So one thing that you could actually observe your skin, right, to see whether you have fully absorbed is that whether the dry areas, you know, still look as dry, especially the under eye as such. Uh, probably it will give you a very good indication. Okay. So I'm just going to let it sit for one minute. Okay, before that, I'm going to, uh, while waiting for the serum to sit in, I'm going to introduce um, my um, moisturizer. I'm using Medicube, which is the red erasing cream. Why this, I can tell you, this really builds the foundation in terms of lightening your skin tone by maybe half a, half a notch. Um, if you do realize that if you're really trying to create that KDF look, um, Korean drama freshness. <laughs> um, it's very rare that you actually see Korean guys really tan. So there must be a certain level of fairness uh, in their look. So 
I feel that you know you really have to make sure that you look fresh yet at the same time you look slightly fair not pale but just slightly fairer okay uh, what I love about this Medicube product is that it really removes the the blushness the sensitivity of my skin because uh, my skin is a little bit sensitive so we, I get a little bit of blush around the forehead, around the cheeks. So this one basically helps me to, to, to lighten that. Okay, so um, this product, and the thing about this product is that once you put it on, right, you really need to wait to really let it sink in. Probably it'll take another minute or so. Um, people who actually use this and didn't like it, they say that, how come my skin looks so pastel white, pale, and stuff like that? Uh, the reason being is that once you apply, it doesn't. It, you actually didn't give it any time to actually sit in nicely, and that is really the key for this product. So uh, you just have to take a look because when it's applied freshly, it does have that plaster, plaster-like finishing, which initially I didn't like it as well because I find it it looks very unnatural. Okay, but once you let it sit nicely, um, you'll see how natural it gets. So I'm not sure if you can tell the difference on screen. Um, so now it's a lot more tame in terms of my skin tone. Okay, I'm just gonna let it sit for one, one minute and we're gonna take a look at how the skin is like. Okay, so after a minute, it has sit in properly. Uh, so at any point in time, if you feel that you have applied too much product, uh, what you could do is that just use a tissue and just dab, okay? Um, sometimes guys, we sort of like perspire a lot more. So I'll actually do this along the way just to remove any additional. You know, sometimes we just start to perspire, especially if not in an icon room. Okay, the next thing it's um, sunblock. I feel it's a good habit. Uh, if you would ask me, does it contribute to the look at the end of the day? I think it does. Uh, once again, depends on your sunblock. Um, I'm using Anasa from Shiseido. Uh, this is a whitening UV sunscreen. So basically this, right, once again, it adds that sort of glassy, mm, translucent, fairer look to your skin. And you see the key is always to build the base to prep the skin really well. So when it comes to the foundation stage, right? You're really using bare minimum foundation, you know? So the foundation is actually sort of like a, more of like just freshening up the whole face with a consistent color, but not using the foundation to keep on piling and piling. So I personally don't like to pile on a lot of layers. Um, I really like looking natural so I, I i guess that that gives me that affinity with a uh, korean makeup look compared to um a lot of other european makeup where it's or european americans where they really pour on a lot of layers okay so sunblock is done um so at this stage your skin should be pretty hydrated Okay, slightly fairer due to the product that you have used. So remember, when you're, whenever you're using the product, you should always go down to cover your neck because uh, your neck needs that care as well. And at the same time, the color needs to be consistent because the product is going to slightly alter the, um, the color of your skin. So once again, I like to dab a little bit to dab the extras. Okay, 
So now, we come to stage two, which is the, the makeup part. Okay, for the foundation, um, today I'm using two products. Um, it's up to you whether you need that two products. But I'm just going to introduce these two steps in terms of foundation. Is uh, not foundation, but kind of like the base makeup. Uh, first is a concealer, then followed by the choice of foundation that you like. Um, I normally don't use concealer because, um, frankly speaking, there's really nothing much to conceal. But I'm going to still kind of like um, demonstrate what are the things that you probably want to look out for when you're using concealer. So if you don't have any marks and scars and spot that you're trying to conceal, probably you want to look around the under eye, okay, around the nose. I think for guys, around the nose has always been like quite red. Uh, or around the chin area, okay? These are some of the areas I will do. Uh, so I'm going to apply a concealer. I'm using Fenty Beauty, but I'm going to use a uh, beauty blender to conceal because I find that the result is a lot more natural. Uh, but having said that, you don't need a beauty blender if you don't have one. I guess for guys, I don't know why guys would want to buy this, uh, but if you have, great. If not, I guess, Fingers works. Okay, so um, I'm going to apply my um, concealer. The trick is always to put it sparingly. Okay, uh, we can always stop up when there's not enough. Okay, so the key to the reason why you should do concealing if you don't have things to conceal is also to even out some skin tone color, yeah. I personally find concealing is a hassle. I really don't know why people want to conceal when they don't have that need to. Uh, yeah, but I guess it gives that refinement or the finesse to your final look. Likewise, mm, just look around, look at the things that you need to cover. Oh, before I forget, your beauty, your beauty blender, please wet it, okay? You can't use it dry. So you can't achieve that sort of result, okay? If it's dry. Uh, so there are some... Okay, so by now you should have your scars, your marks covered, your under eye ring. Okay, okay. The last step to your um your base will be the choice of foundation. Um, if you are trying to create a glassy, you know, dewy look, probably you want to go with a liquid foundation. I don't think. A compact, unless it's a cushion, um, yeah, I think you should avoid uh, a compact. Uh, cushion is fine. So today I'm using um, Hera, since it's going to be Korean, might as well. So Hera Glow Lasting Foundation, the finish is going to be uh, a glow finish. So also steer away from those matte finish because you really can't recreate a Korean uh, freshness look. So... Uh, what I would suggest is that really, really pile on very slowly. So what I'll do is that I'll pump onto my hand a little bit here. Then using another side of the beauty blender, okay, I'm going to start applying, okay. So from there, I'm just going to put on a bit, okay. So the key is always to slowly pounding on... It's so weird that I'm doing this in front of camera. <laughs> okay, so there's one thing that I would do for guys. Um, I don't think ladies, you would be doing that. Is that um, I actually like to put on half a face, meaning like on the right 
a bit on the left first. And I will do a match on the left, meaning that I do not want to go way too far off where I look so obvious that I have makeup on. I think that's really something that I strive for, that I don't want people to tell that I have like a full face of makeup. I know it sounds ridiculous, but the idea is that if you want to do makeup for guys, is that whether you want to look natural instead of looking like, I don't know, a stage performer, yeah, that's what I think it should be in that sense. So I'm going to do half a face. I'm going to show you uh, the kind of result you would be expecting. Okay. So this is a side without uh, makeup but with concealer and everything. And this is a side with foundation. Okay, you could slightly see there's a very slight difference, but it should still stay very fresh. Okay, so um, we're going to complete the look with the other side. So it's always wise to really pump in a little bit and use it bit by bit. Okay. And I really don't think guys would do makeup on a day-to-day basis. I guess at the end, it's just for special events, probably. For me, I'm just way too lazy to do it every day. And remember, the neck, this part is going to be important because that's where people could tell that you have makeup on. <laughs> okay, the forehead. I don't know whether if my technique is correct, but I guess it really depends, you know, on each individual. How comfortable are you with all this? Okay, so the makeup is almost, almost done. Okay. You just have to make sure that it's evenly applied. It really depends on your foundation once again because some of the foundation may not have that sort of coverage that you're looking at. Okay. Okay, so um, not only for the extras, I will just wipe it away. I don't really, I don't want to pile it anymore on the face because I don't want to just do for the sake of doing and affect the result. Okay, so that is how it's looking like right now. The last step, which is the final bit, is to really refine the look. So two things I would do to refine the look. One is brows. The other one will be lips. So for today, I'm going to tidy my brows because basically I, I do plump my brows. I mean, just to tidy it. If you cut your hair, why don't you, you know, trim your brows? <laughs> um, today, I'm using Chanel Boy, Boy Chanel um, Brow Pencil. So there are two ends to it. One is a comb and one is a brow pencil. I'm just going to tidy it really, really fast. Um, Thank God I have quite thick brows, so um, to me it's just like combing hair. I'm just going to comb it. And on the, the other end, I am going to fill up just the front bit, okay? So, to make it really simple. So, very light strokes. So sometimes, uh, if you put on your foundation first, probably it's harder for the pencil to go onto the brows because there's a layer of foundation. You might want to 
slightly dab your brows or rub away the extra foundation. Okay, so if you can tell, this side, you know, I've sort of top up, top up, <laughs> fill up the brows, wells. On the left, I've not done so. So I'm going to do it on the left now. So the key is not to draw your brows like Lapi Xiao Xing. It's just to slightly make it, you know, it looks a bit more dense, but actually from far, you really cannot tell that you have brow pencil on. Okay, so um, good habit is that after you have draw your brows, it's just to clean the tip of the pencil. Otherwise, you have a lot of accumulated oil on it, which will damage your product. Okay, so the brows are done. Last but not least, it's just the lips. And I think that's really important because um, I think a healthy look consists of a healthy looking lips. So um, normally I'll just go for a lip balm that is slightly tinted Vaseline, um, okay? Can just use this. Um. So if you feel that okay, not only you want that sort of very light glow, glow or little sheen, uh, you can actually add a little bit of color. I have this another lip balm is for Elif Bloom. It's called um, Air Mix. Sorry, it's Kiss Mix. I'll just add a little bit of color, a little bit, not too much. Okay. And give it a bit of that color, okay? Oops. There you go. And this is the completed look, okay? Um, some of you might ask, do I need to do shading, you know, and stuff like that? For me, I, I don't. I personally find that shading will really give away that look that you, you have a lot of makeup on your face. Uh, I think for guys, it's really creating that natural, healthy look. Uh, if you ask me, oh, uh, if I don't shade, do I need to lo uh, use loose powder to set my makeup? Which is what Fiona always believes in. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but what I don't like about loose powder is that it mattifies your look. Which means that you don't get, if you can see, right, you see that glow on your cheeks, you know, your forehead. That's the kind of effect that you're trying to achieve if you want that Korean drama freshness. So loose powder for me, no. Um, with a makeup stay, I guess it depends on the quality of your foundation. Uh, I've tried certain liquid foundation and they really stay quite long. I actually liked it. Um, if you feel that your skin is too oily throughout the whole day, uh, just dab accordingly. Um, but for me normally, right, if I were to have makeup out, right, on and out, will be for event, so probably it will be 2-3 hours outside, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, and that's it for today's um, really simple makeup tutorial for Noob, by Noob, for Noob. <laughs> so I hope that, you know, if you really want to create that very basic Korean drama uh, makeup look, um, I hope this is going to be a really easy way that you can actually recreate that sort of effect. Um, and I hope that the next episode where you're back watching us, you'll see me and Fiona together in the same room uh, and hope that COVID will be really over really, really soon and, you know, stay home and stay safe. I'll see you next time.